Hello and welcome to Fireworks. The social media handle hashtag revolution now landed presidential candidate and a publisher Omoyele Shiwore a treason charge and an undetermined time in the company of the DSS. The timeliness of the return of the social media bill at the National Assembly after Shiwore's arrest may be another debate for another day. But civil society thrives on the social media space, so unsurprisingly, it's not taking this with a pinch of salt. Hence, the return of the hashtag no to social media bill, similar to that of 2015. Let's feel their pulse through someone who's currently active at the trenches. Welcome once again. Let's take a moment. Welcome once again to Fireworks. In today's edition, my guest is activist Deji Adinyaju. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me on the platform today. Yes. Let's start with um, your comrade, yeah. Omoyele Shiwore. Yeah. Um, the reports are rife that um, his comments are coming home to haunt him. Yeah. What exactly do you think, in your own view, he did wrong besides the um, handle mm. no to uh, hashtag revolution, revolution now, now yeah, yeah. rather? Basically, you know, it all boils down to the issue of uh, freedom of expression, which has been uh, aptly guaranteed in Section 39 of our Constitution, Constitution of the 99 Constitution as amended, which gives the right to every citizen to uh, share, hold opinion, and even receive opinions, which is exactly what. All Omoyele Shawarei just did by expressing his views, and these views, you know, whether they be misconstrued or not, you know, they are his fundamental views, you understand? And he, his right to hold these opinions, you know, are his. And, you know, whether uh, the government thinks that this is um, uh, dissent, an unfavorable dissent, is another thing. You know, but that is not even the case. The case is that his standing trial is before a competent cause of uh, jurisdiction entirety. So for us, we're looking more at uh, the violation of uh, fundamental rights of Omayel Shiwore. And you know what the provision of the Constitution says, that no one shall be detained, you know, shall be deprived of his right to liberty, except in accordance with a valid order of court. You know, the order, the, the, his initial detention was by an order of court, which uh, was even subsequently um, extended. And when court granted him bail at the first at the court of uh, the initial court, the DSS refused to comply. They hurriedly went to charge him in another court. His uh, words on the hashtag mm. revolution now are tantamount to dissent and uh, mm. it could overheat the polity and lead to an unconstitutional overthrow mm. of government. You see, the constitution is also explicitly clear on this issue. The constitution has expressly st stated the provisions you know, under which Nigeria can be governed. You understand? The constitution says that Nigeria shall not be governed except on the doctrine of uh, democracy, equity, and social, social justice. And, you know, Shawale has not contravened any section of the Constitution, you know, in terms of freedom, expressing his views. He did not call for citizens to take up arms. He did not call for an overthrow of the government. You know, so, and so how does the hashtag revolution now, how does it amount to calling for overthrow of government or, or uh, trying to change the government through unconstitutional means like the way the Constitution put it? So the, the ingredients of his offense cannot be established or proved beyond, before any court of law. And that's why you can see the halubaloo that uh, the DSS and the government are going up and down. They are not interested in anything substantive in that matter. All they want to do is to keep Chewere and lock him up unconstitutionally and unlawful, unlawfully. And we have seen them demonstrate that. I wonder if you, your comrades and the legal team have fully come to terms with the fact that he's facing a treason charge, have you? Mm -hmm. You see, under this government, anybody can face treason charges, you know, and they insult the word treason. In a situation where, you know, someone who is discharging his patriotic duty as a citizen of the country, you know, and Shawara is also the publisher of Sarah Reporters, you know, Shawara has fought hard in his own right for the democracy we're enjoying today, whether we make references to during the time of Chief M.Q. Abiola, Shawara was a student union leader, he played his part. So those who did not play any part in the democracy we have today cannot, you know, use our laws because when they were in power, you know, they suspended the constitution, you understand, and they also abolished the National Assembly. So they cannot therefore, you understand, you know, turn the law upside, upside down and now want to, you know, be the one to judge those 
they want to decide who is patriotic and who is not. You know, and so Shwara has not done anything out of the ordinary. Let, let, let's let's relax on turning the uh, turning the law upside down. I yeah. ask if you have fully come to terms. Mm. If you have fully come to terms with mm. the treason charge, it's a, it's a if, laughable charge. If you charge. have, mm. why aren't you? and the legal team concentrating your energies yeah. on how to get him out yeah. instead of the continuous confrontation. You see, you see, we are dealing with a government that does not respect separation of powers as expressly guaranteed in Section 4, 5, and 6 of our Constitution. You know, we run a constitutional democracy and there's clear demarcation of uh, the various arms of government and even the tiers of government. The Constitution is explicitly clear that the legislative powers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be vested in the legislature. The executive powers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be vested in the executive, which is headed by the president, another independent arm of government. And the judicial power, powers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be vested in the judiciary. But unfortunately for us, we have a government that wants to discharge the executive function and also dis discharge the judicial functions and even legislative functions of government. And that's why you have a situation where courts, this is not the first time, the Shawara case is not the first time where courts will order the, the release of uh, people who have been alleged of one crime or the other. Sambo Dasuki you know, is an example, Zagzaki is an example. You know, and several, a report just came out that the government under President Mohamed Buhari has disobeyed 40 different orders of court. So can you put a face to who you are in talks with at the DSS? You see, almost everyone in Nigeria, every journalist in Nigeria, has spoken to the spokesperson of the DSS. And you see, he keeps changing the story. Oh, if he were released today, oh, a car is going to knock him down. Oh, the shorties have failed to come forward to come and receive Showare. Oh, Showare cannot be released because the people that came to uh, receive him, they are not um, uh, good enough. Oh, this, oh, that, you know. And people begin to, just like the issue that Femi, Femi Falana say, uh, raised, that is the DSS a court of law that when, after a, a, a defendant has met bill conditions, the court has verified that he has met the conditions, the court says she will him. The DSS will now set new standards and new conditions for bail. Now, let, let's move a bit away from Shuwara now. What is the strength of your activism? Let's start mm. even from the hashtag revolution now. Mm. How strong was it to make any significant change? <laughs> you see... The government is just so afraid of everything uh, dissent, you know, or criticism. Because if not, how do you explain a situation where a government that rode to power on the strength of social media, on the strength of free speech, on the strength of uh, freedom of expression? Because we saw how vicious this, uh, this government was when members of this government were, when they were in opposition. Rotimi and Michi, a, the ministers having under this government, said if they had lost the 2015 general election, they were going to run a parallel government to so the government of Gulag Jonathan. Nobody was arrested for that because his right to freedom of expression was guaranteed. Atiku Abubakar, in 2015-2014, said that those who make peaceful change, change impossible, they make violent change inevitable. So all these people, they made remarks that suggested that you know, they expressed, you know, um, very aggressive, you know, opinions. And none of them was arrested. None of them was imprisoned. None of them was put on trial. None of them was charged for treason. The same people today who rose on the, on, the, on the wings of free speech, who rose on the wing of freedom of expression, who rose on the wing of social media, they want to, anything that is against the president or the ruling party or their interest is tagged hate speech. If it's not hate speech, you'll be charged for treason. If it's not treason, they tell you they want to shut, out, shut social media. If they don't want to shut social media, they want to introduce a hate speech bill. So that's the situation we find ourselves today as a country. Well, look, we're referring to the social media bill now. Recall the, the events of uh, 2015, uh, ahead of 2015, yeah. when songs were released condemning a particular tribe. Mm. Recall the statement made by um, some groups in this country demanding the release mm. of um, uh, the, uh, the return of their people mm. from um, a particular uh, region of the country. Mm. Perhaps these are the things that government is trying to guard against. You see, the Supreme Court in the case of Atom Wanko and the state, you know, made a profound, a, a very profound statement, which, is, which serves almost as locus classicals 
on issue of defamation, libel, hate speech, and all this. The Supreme Court said, if you feel the action, the words, or the inactions of someone offends you, or you feel defamed, you feel libeled, you understand? If people, you know, publish libelous contents against you, that you should go to courts. You understand? You should use the libel laws. You should not resort to self-help. Government, even government itself should not resort to self-help by by criminalizing But then inflammatory people. comments would have been made and many would have died. You, you see, to even consider... Let's, let's agree... So isn't I, I, national I, I, let interests... Me, let me agree without conceding to you. considering in see, this let, case. Let me agree without conceding to you that this position and the position of those who are saying these things is even justified. You see, we have the Cyber Crime Act of 2015, which has adequately... Section 24 and 25 of the Cyber Crime Act of 2015, which was passed under Gulag Jonathan, has adequately taken care of those who spread hate speech, whether it be on social media, those who spread falsehood on social media. I myself have been charged under the Cyber Crime Act of 2015 in, in one of the courts. So, and the Cardinal State Governor has put so many people on trial for hate speech, for, you know, cyber crime uh, related offenses, you know, and several others. So, when we look at it, we say, and for instance, you see a situation, a gradual situation in the country where journalists are put on trial, put on handcuffs. Agba Jalingo is an example. Or people don't agree with your, your position. They just look for within the laws, whether it be the Cybercrime Act or the Constitution or the Criminal Procedure Code or the Criminal Procedure Act. They just look for an offense. You understand? To charge you. And the goal, the goal is what if we permit new laws, they, they charge people to court, knowing fully well that these charges cannot be maintained, just like they charge against your warrior. But they do it so that they keep you in court, you understand? Waste the time of the court, waste taxpayers' money, you know, then deprive you of, the, of, of your right to, 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 to personal liberty. They've left the Electoral Act Bill, Electoral Amendment Act Bill. Seri more serious and important things have been left to be focusing on social media. The reason why these guys are going after social media, I will tell you why. The reason is because... The executive haven't failed the people. The legislature haven't failed the people. The judiciary that used to be the last hope of the common man haven't failed. The people now resort to social media to, as the last hope of the common man. Because that is the only place where they go to, to go and vent their anger and frustration against government, against government officials. These government officials, you can see what Senator Elisha Abel was saying. This is somebody who was caught in a sex, sex shop assaulting a woman. He was so angry. Why wouldn't... Why, just tell me, why wouldn't Elisha Abu be angry? Why wouldn't he want social media not to, to be re regulated? Of course, he will, he will want social media to be regulated because it exposes his heinous crimes. Somebody who is standing trial for assaulting a woman in a sex shop, he would definitely be one of the arrowheads of trying to regulate social media. The, the, the Independence Day of, Pre of President Muhammad Buhari on 1st of October 2019 says it all, where he says, we are going to deal ruthlessly with all those spreading hate. On social media. Who determines what is hate and what is love speech? Is it the president? Is it Lai Mohammed that has been saying that they must regulate social media? So we are not in any way surprised that this bill suddenly, miraculously landed in the uh, red chamber of the National Assembly after the remarks of the president on, in, in his uh, Independence Day speech and after the repeated uh, uh, insinuations by the by Lai, uh, Minister of Information Lai Mohammed. The social media bill, the hate speech bill, to be or not to be, uh, some say, like my guests, that uh, to stifle uh, opposition um, will be undemocratic. But some say that uh, where one person's right starts is where another stops. Let's take a moment. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us on Fireworks. My guest today is uh, Deji Adenyoju, activist, and uh, we'll be looking at the travails of Omoyele Shiwore, uh, former presidential candidate and publisher uh, of Sahara Reporters. Uh, le let's move a bit forward now. Yeah. Um, you presented before journalists at yeah. that uh, rally where you demanded uh, the release of Shiwore, yeah. the sum of one million naira. Yeah. You said you were um, induced yeah. to you know, not come out right. for that rally. Tell right. us more about that. Well, basically, you know, I already laid the facts before the public 
you know, and uh, just like I said when I, you know, uh, tendered the money, you know, I had said that I'm not going to go into details because, you know, we're in, we're, we're in dangerous times. The whole goal of uh, trying to compromise us was to ensure that we, we, we compromise and betray the struggle, which we will never do. Uh, they specifically told us that, um, you know, that um, we, I cannot come out tomorrow and that the comrades must not come out, you know, and uh, that uh, that rally cannot go on, you know, because of blah, blah, A, B, C, and D. And, um, you know, when you are at gunpoint, you cannot really argue with those uh, who are giving you uh, these <laughs> unpleasant gifts, you know. So you collect the money which is what I did, and the next day we did what was right, we mobilized, we went on in the night, late in the night, mobilizing people, telling people to come out and mass, we continued, you know, that up to late hours uh, in the night, and the next morning we stormed the, their office, and then um, even some journalists on ground were saying that they told them that we are not going to come, that they, there's not, no cause for alarm, but we showed up, and um, we did what, you know, we have always done, you know, by transparently informing Nigerians that... Um, that this, was what transpired. That, that was what transpired. Have there been threats to your life afterwards? You know, for me, there, there's always somebody who believes that he loves Buhari more than Buhari himself, who believes that the president is a mini-god, who believes that uh, what people are doing, or the, people, the, the views that people are expressing, you know, against the president you know, are, are, are unpleasant and who believes that they want to please the president. So there's always that one person somewhere, you know, who will go out of his way, you know, to do one thing or the other. Whether he's sent, I don't know whether they are not sent, you know, but I have received so many threats that sometimes, you know, I have so, I have so commonized these threats. Like, and like what I said that day, you know, we get to a point in our life where we just leave everything to God, hoping that, you know, uh, we will not one day you know, be shot down on the street, you know, or abducted like the theater, you understand, or given, you know, the, the Iraqi treatments where people just disappear completely okay. from the face of the earth. From what you say, there's reason to believe that uh, those who have threatened you and mm. tried to induce you are very powerful and mm. influential people. Obviously. Uh, so if they are, um, why present you with an insignificant sum? The truth of the matter is that, uh, that's why I said, when you are at gunpoint, Anything that you're giving, even if you're giving five million, you must take it. Wouldn't it be more believable if they, mm. have, they had preve presented you with a bigger you, sum? You see, let me tell you something. The people we are dealing with, they have no... You know, at times, you find people in government who have certain things they cannot do. You understand? They just have no-go areas. These people that we are dealing with, they have no-go areas. You think the money is insignificant, they may think the money is significant. So mm. what is insignificant really? to you, what is insignificant to you is, is significant to them. You see, the good thing was that when all these things transpired, when all these things transpired, there was a material witness. Perhaps the money was not the right price for you. <laughs> you see? If the money was the right price, you see, you perhaps see, we would not have seen you, you, see, you at see, the rally the following day. You see, let me tell you something. There are things that I have... You been, appear to be a very comfortable man. So you see, there are things... A millionaire are, will... There are things that I have... Will not uh, change there, there your are, disposition. There are things that I have... I have not said, but I will say them. I will just give a brief info about things I've not said before. You see, when, we, when many of us said that Charlie Boy, you know, compromised our group by going to receive money from the oppressors, we we're not saying it because of the disappointment. We're saying it because we, we ourselves have been offered money, not once, not twice, not three times before. You understand? And whatever they must have offered them, we've been offered times 10 of that in the past. They would refuse to compromise. We refuse to sell our conscience. We refuse to abandon the struggle. So, really? you see, you see now, wh 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 whether, whether because this was given at gunpoint or not, the truth of the matter is that not once, not twice, not thrice, people in this government have tried to give all sorts of money, all kinds of money and all kinds of promises so that we stop what we are doing. They will refuse. And, 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 and you think and Nigerians should reason, believe that? Whether Nigerians believe or not, the people who did this in government, they know themselves. You said moments they, ago they that do. you had rallies in um, 
Port Harcourt, you had yes. rallies in other states of the yes. Federation. Who sponsored these rallies? Rallies we do are self-sponsored by our members and by volunteers. For instance, the rally... Who are your volunteers? Our members generally are Nigerians. For instance, I'll give you a perfect example of the rally in uh, Niger State. The rally in Niger, after we made a post on social media or on Facebook, that please, if you want to lead any of the rallies in any of the states, please kindly indicate and say your address, your phone numbers, and all that. Some people indicated, about seven people indicated. I, and I decided to pick just one of them. Mr. Same thing, same, are you thing, being sponsored same. by fifth columnists to mm. destabilize this administration, to cast aspersions on this administration, as was seen in 2015, mm. when there were a lot of reports that painted the good luck Jonathan administration in negative light. No, Are you being sponsored by fifth columnists? Definitely not. Are your sponsors from the PDP? Definitely not. You but see, there are reports it, that you have sponsors from the PDP. You see, let me tell you something. I will just give you a simple example. Uh, about three and a half weeks ago, we were at the U.S. Embassy calling for visa ban for the governor of Cross River State over the unlawful detention of Agba Jalingo and one other. Who sponsored that? APC? You tell us. No, you, you, are the, you are the journalist. You can make the findings. So it's not the first time that we hear all this blackmail from government or sympathizers of the government. You understand? They are uncomfortable with the things we do. It's just like when we criticize PDP people and we call for actions against PDP people. The PDP people will say, is APC that is sponsoring us? How? How is that possible? It's just like saying, Femi Falana is my sponsor. It's like saying Femi Valana is my sponsor. It makes no sense to reason. If, a go if, if this government, members of this government have tried to give me all kinds of money, including me, asking me to bring name for someone, for someone close to me to be appointed in, in the government. So if I don't want the appointment to be appointed into government and I refuse. So you look at the people in PDP. They even have financial problem. They can barely, are, are you not hearing what they are saying? That they can barely pay their staffs in Wadata Plaza. So what are we talking about? You see, the sympathizers of government and the oppressors and, ty and the tyrants, they are always uncomfortable when they are challenged by the truth. So what they do is to resort to distractions. And we will not be distracted by members of APC, their sympathizers, their supporters, and the enablers of tyrants. One thing that we have always been consistent in saying is that it's just like what we, when we did what we did against uh, Ben Ayade, all, all the things I've done against governors in P PDP, whether it's the Fire Wiki, and all these people. At a point, the, mem the media aides of Governor Wiki were saying that Amici was sponsoring me to be attacking Wiki. And Amici is a member of the APC. They even allege that, they even allege a certain amount that uh, Rosemary Amici gave me. So I am not new to all these allegations and counter allegations. You see, one thing, one lesson that the Charlie Boy example has taught us is that whoever compromises, whether you do it in secret or you even do it in the d dead uh, time of the night, things will always come up. And that's why Ch even Charlie Boy himself could not deny. Although he was later called to deny, but you see, Nigerians already made up their mind. Nigerians knew the truth. Nigerians made up their mind already. But you know, I say again, perhaps the right price hasn't been offered you, Mr. Adeyoju. Hmm. Uh, you so know, if, 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 I tell, if, I, if I tell you, my sister, if I tell you that I've been offered two million dollars to compromise, with its price, hold on. If I tell you, the, if I hold on, if I tell you, you, where are the activists who made a lot of noise ahead hmm. of the 2015 election after hmm. the? national conference mm. uh, be, prior to the 2015 election uh, mm. i beg your pardon mm. uh, after the national conference mm. where they partook and they were paid a huge sums of money mm. where are those activists you see so perhaps if, if you were if offered the right if I, price if i tell you if i tell you that i've been offered two million dollars to leave nigeria travel abroad and stop disturbing this government you will really believe it if i tell you that i've been offered that i should bring one of my in-laws, I should bring in one of my in-laws so that he'll be given an appointment so that I will be taken care of if I don't want to accept the appointment. Will you believe? You know, you will not. Look at what just happened in the Bayesa election. There are insinuations that the former president compromised and struck a deal with the APC. So almost everybody has a price in Nigeria. 
almost everybody, but it does not mean that it's everybody that has a price. So you don't you have see, a price. I don't have a price, and they know it. And you will not have a price in the future. I cannot have a price. And let me tell you something. The former DG of SSS, the former DG of SSS, said the only reason why they had not finished me is because I, I, I don't take money. Now, if I took, usually take money, they will have finished me since. You can verify all these things we, we say. You see, let me tell you something. Conviction drives us. Why must I So do... besides activism, what do you do? How do you sustain yourself? Well, I do a lot of business because, for instance, I do buying and selling a lot. There, are, there is a supply chain from Sokoto of you know, perishable items that I do. And I've been doing it now for almost about seven years. And that's your only source of income. That's not my only source of you income. You don't I have inherited... your price Hold where on. your activism is concerned. You see, let me tell you something. I inherited a feeling station from my late father. If they had told you that Taliban will collect money from people when me, his fellow com comrade, was in prison in Kano, would you have believed? How does it even sound to the ear that throughout the duration of my stay in prison, Charlie Boy was, he, he, he could barely condemn my, my detention. So, Dejade, you, you will not have a price in the future. I will not have a price now. I will not have a price tomorrow. I will not have a price next tomorrow. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, program. my sister. Thank you. And that's our package on fireworks today. Thank you for watching. We urge you to join us again. Same time next week when we'll bring you another edition of the program. I am Bukola Samuel Wenimo. Bye for now.